This was the vision that I did not want to see, the horror that I did not want to live. A sickening feeling of nausea sneaks up on me, and abominable perfidious serpents wind their way slowly and cracklingly through parched undergrowth. They hang down lazily and disgustingly lethargic from the branches, looped in dreadful knots. I am reluctant to enter this dreary and unsightly valley, where the bushes stand in arid stony defiles. The valley looks so normal, its air smells of crime, of foul cowardly deeds. I am seized by disgust and horror. I walk hesitantly over the boulders, avoiding every dark place for fear of treading on a serpent. The sun shines weakly out of a grey and distant sky, and all the leaves are shriveled. A marionette with a broken head lies before me amidst the stones a few steps further, a small apron, and then behind the bush, the body of a small girl covered with terrible wounds smeared with blood. One foot is clad with a stocking and shoe, the other is naked, and gorily crushed the head. Where is the head? The head is a mash of blood with hair and whitish pieces of bone, surrounded by stone smeared with brain and blood. My gaze is captivated by this awful sight a shrouded figure, like that of a woman, is standing calmly next to the child. Her face is covered by an impenetrable veil, she asks me. What then do you say? What should I say? This is beyond words. Do you understand this? I refuse to understand such things. I can't speak about them without becoming enraged. Why become enraged? You might as well rage every day of your life, for these and similar things occur on earth every day. But most of the time we don't see them. So, knowing that they happen is not enough to enrage you. If I merely have knowledge of something, it's easier and simpler. The horror is less real if all I have is knowledge. Step nearer and you will see that the body of the child has been cut open. Take out the liver. I will not touch this corpse. If someone witnessed this, they would think that I'm the murderer. You are cowardly. Take out the liver. Why should I do this? This is absurd. I want you to remove the liver. You must do it. Who are you to give me such an order? I am, the soul of this child, you must do this for my sake. I understand nothing, but I'll believe you and do this horrific and absurd deed. I reach into the child's visceral cavity, it is still warm, the liver is still firmly attached, I take my knife and cut it free of the ligaments. Then I take it out and hold it with bloody hands toward the figure. I thank you. What should I do? You know what the liver means, and you ought to perform the healing act with it. What is to be done? Take a piece of the liver, in place of the whole, and eat it. What are you demanding? This is absolute madness. This is desecration, necrophilia. You make me a guilty party to this most hideous of all crimes. You have devised the most horrible torment for the murderer, which could atone for his act. There is only one atonement. Abase yourself and eat. I can't. I refuse. I can't participate in this horrible guilt. You share in this guilt. I share in this guilt. You are a man, and a man has committed this deed. Yes, I am a man. I curse whoever did this for being a man. So, take part in his act. Abase yourself and eat. I need atonement. So, shall it be for your sake, as you are the soul of this child. I kneel down on the stone, cut off a piece of the liver and put it in my mouth. My gorge rises, tears burst from my eyes, cold sweat covers my brow, a dull sweet taste of blood, I swallow with desperate efforts, it is impossible, once again and once again, I almost faint. It is done, the horror has been accomplished. I thank you. She throws her veil back, a beautiful maiden with ginger hair. Do you recognize me? How strangely familiar you are. Who are you? I am. Your soul. Man cannot accomplish this act solely by himself, but is assisted by evil, which does it instead of man, but man must recognize his complicity in the act of evil. He must bear witness to this recognition by eating from the bloody sacrificial flesh. 
Through this act he testifies that he is a man, that he recognizes good as well as evil, and that he destroys the image of the god's formation through withdrawing his life force, with which he also dissociates himself from the god. This occurs for the salvation of the soul, which is the true mother of the divine child.